Good afternoon. I'm DFL Chairman Ken Martin, and this is the Chair's Corner. Joining me today is Mike Obermiller, the DFL endorsed candidate for Congressional District 2. Mike is a former state legislator who represented the seat once held by Tim Pawlenty. He grew up working on his parents' small dairy farm and worked to put himself through college and law school. Mike lives in Egan with his wife Sarah and their two teenage sons, where he is a member of the Dakota County Regional Chamber of Commerce. Mike, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Ken. Really appreciate you being here. Now, Mike, recently your campaign was selected as a highly competitive emerging race by the DCCC. What did you and your campaign do to earn this distinct distinction? Well, we're proud of the effort that put in. It's, it's really a lot about the work that you put to put a strong campaign team together and to make sure that you're taking advantage of the opportunities that are there. Uh, you may know that this, as you know, this district got a lot better for us in the, uh, with the redistricting. Uh, picked up several thousand votes from Betty McCollum's old district, uh, got rid of a difficult county. Uh, and it's now essentially a 50-50 seat. And we've been taking advantage of that by really getting out into the district and talking to the voters about John Klein's voting record, uh, which is not uh, one that matches the district very well. Well, we know John Klein is vulnerable, but one of the things I think has really impressed me and other Democrats around this state over the years, not only in your run for Congress the last time, but also in your uh, time in the state legislature and all those many days and hours you spent door knocking uh, the district in Egan, is just how hard of a worker you are. Are, and that's a testament to your hard work that you were put on the DCCC's Emerging Races uh, program. Uh, as you mentioned, this is a 50-50 district, and I've always said, as you know and you believe this as well, that we will put a Democrat into Congress uh, uh, before the next reapportionment, and I believe that we're going to be able to do that here this year in 2014. Can you tell me a little bit about how the campaign's shaping up so far from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, we're really proud of the effort that we've put into it. We've got a great team around us, um, and we've done the things that it takes to build your name recognition and really keep the momentum going that we built on from my last run against Mr. Klein. But Mr. Klein's doing us a favor as well. He keeps voting out there, and uh, he's giving us plenty of stuff to work with because the votes that he's taken really undermine the middle class. And we've got to start talking about the things that actually bolster the middle class and build it up, uh, making sure college is affordable, making sure that uh, seniors get a chance to retire with dignity in this country. And those are the things and the messages that we want to sell, and that's why we're actually having some success, is people want to hear that message as well. Uh, one of the things uh, your uh, opponent, John Klein, has voted over 50 times now to repeal the uh, Affordable Care Act. What do you say to constituents at the doors and on the phones when they ask you about this important issue and, and, and how John Klein has uh, not really represented the views of the folks in the 2nd District? Yeah, well, you know, the Affordable Care Act isn't perfect, but what the Republicans are selling right now is essentially a full repeal, at least Mr. Klein is. And the reality is that uh, has big impacts. That's a, there's consequences if that were to happen. You're going to have 26-year-old uh, kids who are going to be thrown off their parents' insur insurance before they turn 26. Seniors are going to pay more for prescription drugs. Kids aren't going to have a dental benefit that they need. Um, big, large, for-profit insurance companies across the country are going to have a chance to do whatever they want, whenever they want, including pe throwing people off their coverage. Uh, that's the real impact of repeal, and that's what John Klein's selling out there, and that's not what we should do. We ought to work to improve, continue to expand coverage, make sure that we're uh, continuing to close the donut hole in, in the, the Affordable Care Act with the, with the Medicare Part D that it, that it made some good strides for. Um, that's what people want. They want people to have access to affordable and reliable health care. Mr. Klein's going the wrong direction. And there's no doubt about it, and I think if you uh, think about what the Republicans are now saying is that we want to repeal and replace. They still haven't come up with uh, anything they would actually replace the Affordable Care Act with at this point. We know that uh, their their plans have been basically uh, just uh, they're a party of no, no new ideas, no solutions to complex issues like this. And while, you, as you mentioned, this isn't the best uh, program, uh, um, or they're still, I, I would say, the, you know, uh, we need to fix this program and find ways to make it work for everyone. Uh, it is what we have, and it's starting to work, and people are starting to see the benefits. No one wants to go back to the days when uh, people were kicked off of health uh, insurance because of pre-existing conditions. No one wants to go back to the days, like you said, when uh, young college students can afford health care insurance, so they went without it. And I think, you know, you've uh, actually been uh, one of the few Democrats uh, out there, thankfully, and, and 
our party and others owe you a, a deep sense of gratitude on this, to stand up and call it for what it is. We're not going to go back to those days. We need to stand up and fight for people and stand up for health insurance coverage. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, thank you. Well, we're excited about the chance. This is an opportunity for us to be on offense on an issue that we really care about. Affordable, reliable health care. That's something Democrats stand for. And uh, we ought to be proud about the fact that we've put a good, a good bill in place, a good law in place, and now we've got to continue to improve on it. Right. Now, if you're elected to Congress, which you will be here in five months, what will be the focus of your work uh, those first two years? Well, it's, it's that word work that you just mentioned, I think. Uh, we've got a Congress out there now that does a lot more talking and a lot less doing. Um, and we need uh, people out in Congress to help our par you know, be partners to Senator Franken and Senator Klobuchar uh, in the House so they can actually get some things done out there. Uh, you know, the middle class in this country has been squeezed, and uh, there's a lot of pressure on um, them to be the, the job creators that we all want, uh, but you got to make sure you give them the tools to make sure that they can get there. That means a level playing field. It means stamping out discrimination in our workplaces. It means making sure that college is affordable for our, for our kids and our students. Um, I got two kids in college right now, and so I, I definitely know that the, the, the price of, of uh, college is a, a big impactor on whether or not a uh, family can be successful, help move my, my generation forward and my next, the next generation mm -hmm. forward. Um, and that's, you know, that's where the focus has to be. Congressman Klein, unfortunately, has been really focused on giving huge tax breaks away to millionaires and, and uh, trying to basically make it less secure for seniors to retire. And, I think we have to do a better job of showing the contrast that we are. What, what happens if you actually repeal the Affordable Care Act? What happens if you privatize Social Security? Um, you get a really negative impact on our, on our society, and uh, we can do better than that, and I'm going to do better than that when I get there. Well, you know, Paul Wellstone used to say that uh, we all do better when we all do better, and I think uh, overall Democrats have been committed to trying to make sure that uh, this rising economic tide benefits everyone in this uh, state and country. Uh, and one of the things that I've been saying as of late is it's amazing what happens when you elect people to office who care about governing. You actually get good government. And I have no doubt when you go to Congress that you'll follow in the stead of someone like Paul Wellstone and others who came before you to make sure that we're actually standing up and fighting for people, uh, not special interests, not the rich and the powerful, but for all the people in the 2nd District. And I think you're going to do a great job when you're there. What's something that... Uh, uh, the, the viewers and, and others uh, out there might not know about Mike Obermiller. Uh, maybe a little tidbit or just a fact that you want to share with folks who are watching today. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it really the reason I'm running for Congress, it all comes down to kind of that upbringing I had. I grew up on a little family dairy farm uh, where my parents taught me that value of community. Um, you know, my dad's farm probably would have failed if it was all by itself, but because it had neighboring farms that were all working together, those farms were successful. I took that off into college where I met my wife on the first day of school and um, we worked as our little family uh, and used our community around us to make sure we took the next big step to, from teetering on, you know, the brink of not having enough dollars to feed ourselves to, to being successful. I want that for everybody in Minnesota. I want that for everyone in this country. A level playing field, the opportunity to work hard, and a real chance of success. And uh, the, the reason we got to flip this seat is because we've got to have more people in Congress who think like that. Well, I live, I think, about a mile or so from you. You will be my congressman. I'm looking forward to voting uh, for you again uh, this Thank November. You. And I'm looking forward to coming out to Washington for your inauguration next January. That's Thank so you so much for being here, Mike. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. Again, thank you to Mike Obermiller for joining me on this edition of the Chair's Corner. Mike's campaign to strengthen the economy and protect Medicare and the middle class is a refreshing change of pace for Minnesota families from their current representative. As always, I appreciate your support of the DFL party. If you are interested in volunteering on campaigns like Mike's, please visit www.dfl.org. Working with our DFL leaders across this state, we will build a better Minnesota. Thank you.